Religion and politics mix about as well as strong painkillers and vodka. But at election season, lots of people seem to be asking, how should Jews vote? And there are plenty of opinions. Democrats share Jewish values. Judaism is conservative in the modern parlance. We are the most consistently democratic voting bloc after black people. Stop thinking we're conservative. Any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. There's a major problem in trying to figure out the so-called Jewish vote. It can mean completely opposite things to different people. For some, it means voting for the candidate who will be the strongest supporter of Israel or who will provide funding for religious schools. And for another demographic, it means voting for values that loosely align with the concept of tikkun olam, translated as fixing the world. Even within that category, tikkun olam can mean anything from environmentalism to Holocaust education. To summarize, voting Jewish is too vague of a term to actually be meaningful. But maybe it doesn't have to be. Maybe there's something at the core of Jewish teachings that can guide its adherence towards either a vote for the elephants or the donkeys. It's about time we settled this once and for all. Should Jews be voting conservative or liberal? The answer may surprise you. Here's the Mensch Sense take. Politics is messy, so let's just simplify things a little bit. Take away the actual candidates for now. They're just details, right? Let's instead try to define what liberal and conservative actually mean. The word liberal simply means free, the removal of boundaries and distinctions, like when your sunscreen bottle instructs you to apply liberally. Liberalism advocates for removing some of the tight social hierarchies of the past and creating more equal rights. Liberals seek more freedom of movement across borders, more freedom to live as you please, and more freedom from poverty through social welfare. In this sense, many Jewish values could be considered liberal. The Hebrew Bible's Exodus story from Egypt represented the first ancient document where God took the side of the oppressed against power. The Jewish emphasis on charity and supporting the poor was also a major revolution for its time. And of course, historically, the liberal idea of welcoming immigrants to America made Jewish migrants very warm towards the Democratic Party. And that's why the majority of Jews have been voting Democrat for almost a hundred years. But in recent elections, the tide has been shifting ever so slightly towards Republicans. So what do conservative values mean? As the name suggests, conservatism means to protect something that already exists. Conservatives assume that many institutions that exist today are around precisely because they've been tested for a very long time and they work. These would be things like religion, family, and social structure, and certain political traditions as well. Conservatives don't necessarily say that nothing should change, but they espouse the idea that change should occur very slowly and organically to prevent unforeseen consequences. It's pretty clear how Judaism could also be interpreted to align with conservatism. The Jewish religion revolves around the preservation of the ancient law and its values. Practically speaking, religious communities tend to adopt change much more slowly, preferring older styles of dress, a cautious approach to technology, and much more traditional communal structures. Well, aren't we pretty much where we started? It sounds like you could mold Jewish beliefs to support either liberal or conservative ideals, depending on which values you choose to emphasize. So how are we any closer to coming to a conclusion about which way to vote? Here's the surprise you might not have been expecting. It's possible that the very question we've been asking is a false one. Allow me to explain with a small but very relevant digression into Jewish mysticism. Yes, Jewish mysticism. According to the Kabbalistic tradition, the universe is sustained by two primary forces. There is the expansive, creative urge emanating from divine love. This is the first force that brings something into being out of nothing. But an uncontrollable expansion is not a sustainable one. An unchecked process of rapidly dividing cells in a human body is called cancer. There needs to be a counterbalance, one that contains that loving creativity and gives it shape. That's the second primary force, the thing that defines boundaries and gives structure. In Kabbalah, these two forces are known as chesed and gevura. The constant tension between these two forces allows for a universe that evolves and changes, but manages to do so without tearing down the entire underlying order. Now, let's come back to politics. In our warlike, polarized landscape, 
we are used to thinking that the Democrats and Republicans are vying for a conclusive conquest over each other. Each side thinks, if only our team won once and for all, then the country would be a better place. But our political spectrum mirrors the fundamental nature of reality. We need both the liberal urge to change and expand freely, as well as the conservative urge to contain and solidify what we have already created. You might hate me for saying this, but Democrats and Republicans need each other. As the 20th century philosopher Bertrand Russell put it, it is clear that each party to this dispute, as to all that persists through long periods of time, is partly right and partly wrong. Every community is exposed to two opposite dangers, ossification through too much discipline and reverence for tradition on the one hand, and on the other hand, dissolution or subjection to foreign conquest through the growth of an individualism and personal independence that makes cooperation impossible. Let's spell it out even more. Too much liberalism and you create a world that is so free, anything goes. When change occurs at breakneck speed and nothing keeps us committed to a larger sense of communal duty, then eventually we tear down all institutions and lose our cohesion. In other words, total anarchy. On the other hand, too much conservatism, and you create a world that stifles creative expression, imprisons people in their social and economic stratuses, and kills all compassion. We eventually collapse into totalitarianism. For those of you who are thinking, well, I'd probably prefer one of those outcomes over the other, that's probably because you are so privileged to live in a functioning society that you don't understand how both of these would be hell on earth. It may take some getting used to, but all of us, not just Jews, need to reorient ourselves to the long-term strategy where liberals and conservatives must see each other as necessary partners in the continuity of our society. So was this whole video a bait and switch? Didn't I say I would tell you who to vote for? I assume that the viewers of this channel are intelligent enough to realize that deciding on your vote requires a lot of research on policy and eventually comes down to your own personal preferences. No seven minute YouTube video should be making that decision for you. But the principle here is even more important than this year's round of elections. The most Jewish vote, so to speak, that you can make would be for the party or candidate who is closest to reconciling the spirit of both parties. If in your educated opinion there is someone whose platform manages in some way to reconcile the urge to expand freely as well as the urge to preserve with caution, then that, my friends, is who you should vote for. But if, like me, you're extremely unsatisfied with both parties and candidates, then here's my advice. Stop talking so much about politics and start figuring out how you can fix the world through other means that are more noble, less corrupt, and in a way that you can have more influence. That narrows it down to pretty much every single thing other than politics. And that makes much sense.